welcome back to the Chasing Happiness Podcast, an honest podcast about finding happiness, what it really means, and the process of getting there. My name is Crystal, and today we're going to tackle cancel culture. And I know a bunch of you are taking a really big deep breath right now. Bear with me, because we've kind of gotten to this place in the society that we live in currently, where anything that could be deemed even as a mistake, whether it be from yesterday or 10 years ago, has never now started to become a reason to get people fired, to unfriend them, to no longer be a part of those people's everyday life. And this is a little disconcerting. And I'll tell you why. If we don't allow room for people to grow and change, let's say, for example, in a 10-year period, then how on earth does the world change? How does it get better? Now, I'm not saying that there aren't some people who have made some really big mistakes and maybe they haven't changed and maybe they do need to have someone hold a mirror up to that. But there are a lot of people who, when they were 15, thought very differently than they do when they're 35. So if we live in a world that is going to punish them at 35 for how they felt at 15 when they didn't know any better, we're going to be walking a very dangerous line. I do think it is necessary to point out to people that their thinking may be one-sided, their thinking may be flawed because maybe they don't have all the facts. There's a way to do that in kindness to help educate people or help get them the information that maybe they were never given before without purposefully canceling their whole lives. And I think social media, especially since COVID started, has trapped us in this world where it's all or nothing. You are either somebody who thinks specific thoughts in one way or the other, and there can be no gray area, or you just don't count, which is also disconcerting. Because for most of us, we think how we're taught to think as children. And then as we grow up, as we experience different aspects of life and meet new people, when we go off to college and when we travel and we see the way other people are living outside of our little bubbles from childhood, then we start to change our way of thinking. We start to process things differently. We start to account for things differently and we see the world in a different way. And of course, culture changes. What was politically correct and acceptable 25 years ago isn't politically correct and acceptable now. So if we're not leaving room for everyone to grow and change with culture, to grow and change as they become adults and grow into whatever roles they're going to take in life, then we're walking a very dangerous road where people will refuse not only to have these kinds of conversations, but they'll refuse to change at all. And I worry about that. I worry that we'll get to a place where we can't have an open discussion about different views, whether that's political, personal, spiritual. If you and I have opposing views on, let's say, for example, religion, you might not understand where I'm coming from. And I may not understand where you're coming from, but if we can sit down and have an open and honest discussion without judgment and without fear of retribution, then we have a better chance of coming to at least an understanding of why we feel differently, of where the common ground might be. And I think because of cancel culture, we're getting further away from that. And that's scary. We cannot change people's minds. We cannot help people grow. We cannot change society if we aren't aren't able to have open, honest discussions. Now, I understand some of this cancel culture started out of a necessity. And I'm not saying that everybody fits into this category where they shouldn't be punished in some way or whether there shouldn't be some form of what social media is labeling as a retribution. Of course, there are things that shouldn't happen. In today's day and age, you shouldn't act like you would have acted 40 years ago. The world is a very different place and the world still has a lot of change that needs to happen. But if you have grown, if you're somebody who isn't the person you were 20 years ago, but you did something 20 years ago that actually the time was actually accepted behavior. It was politically correct. It was acceptable. It was what people were doing at the time. But now you know better. It's been 20 years. You've learned. You've grown. You've talked to people about that. And the world has started to change and is no longer accepting of that. You shouldn't be punished today because who you are now isn't who you were then. The world isn't what it was then. So I think we're walking a very thin tightrope. And I think we we need to be very cautious and self-aware of just how quickly we jump on the bandwagon 
of this cancel culture. It's a scary time in the world of social media. There is false information everywhere. There are fake videos being uploaded that look real. People's accounts are being hacked. So I guess for this week, I just want everyone to think about, have you changed in the last 20 years? Are you the same person you were 20 years ago? My guess is no. So be very cautious when judging people for behavior that they had a decade ago or more. And of course, I'm not talking about people who are misbehaving or acting inappropriately today, because that's a different kind of conversation. But I think we have to be very careful that we don't close the door to open dialogue of different views on every aspect of life, because I'm a little worried about what the world would look like if we can't have those kinds of conversations. I hope you guys all have a great week. I'm sending you lots of love and light. If you enjoy the podcast, please share it with someone or rate it on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen. Have a great week and I will chat with you guys next week. Bye for now. Thank you.